Welcome to the Art Settlers of New York, an exclusive production of Manhattan Neighborhood Network, MNN, direct from MNN's El Barrio Firehouse Community Media Center, located at 175 East 104th Street, between Lexington and Third Avenues in the heart of East Harlem. My name is Rafaela Rani Bellini, founder and co-executive producer of the Art Settlers of New York, and we will be having a conversation with Dr. Nancy Mercado, international award-winning, published poet and writer, whose work has been extensively anthologized around the world. She's a founding member of the New Yorican literary movement and is a recipient of the 2017 American Book Award for Lifetime Achievement. Dr. Mercado was also named among the Frederick Douglass 200 on the bicentennial of Douglass's birth. This list included individuals like Oprah Winfrey and Michelle Obama. She is also a professor at Borico College. She loves, loves, loves New York City and is a proud resident of the Upper West Side and an art settler of New York. We will have a performance by Dr. Mercado where she will read one of her works written in honor of her other home and dear to her heart, Puerto Rico. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to be here. An honor to be here with you. Yes. Mike. So <laughs> we've been waiting a long time to, mm -hmm. to have you, your busy schedule, mm -hmm. your teaching schedule, your traveling schedule. <laughs> but here, here you are finally, Nancy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we look forward to what we're going to learn more about you and how Nancy became uh, a poet and mm -hmm. teaching this craft to others and uh, particularly about our literature, which yeah. is so important, especially here in New York City. Mm. So, so you were born in, where? In Atlantic City, New Jersey. <laughs> You're a Southern yes. Jersey girl. <laughs> Actually, yes. I, I want to consider myself an adopted New Yorker at least. Um, I, I love Jersey, South Jersey in particular, uh, because of the beautiful ocean and beachfront. But uh, New York is very near and dear to me. I, I'm sure you prefer the Caribbean. Oh, See? well, you, yes, of course. Well, that's, yeah. another, that's another story. Yes. That's your other love. <laughs> that's what we said. Your other love is Puerto yes, Rico. Yes, absolutely. So, so tell, tell me uh, uh, and our audience about um, your transition uh, from a, uh, a southern New Jersey, uh, first generation Puerto Rican, yes. becoming a New Yorican. How was that? Uh, about going, you, you went to school in the state of New Jersey, Rutgers. Yes, I went for my undergraduate degree at Rutgers, and um, I always wanted, since I was a child, I always wanted to live in New York City. Okay, I it always had a draw for me, so I worked my way north. <laughs> you know, so. Um, Coming from a humble background, of course, I didn't have money to just move into New York. It took me years. Um, and uh, I, I went to Rutgers. I, I lived uh, uh, in New Brunswick. I lived there and then moved my way up to Jersey City, <laughs> you know, to Newark. Uh, lived where there. Did you, where did you get your years. master's? Then my master's, I moved to Jersey City and commuted to uh, New York University. Okay. Where I got, I obtained my master's from there. At NYU. Yes, at NYU, yes. And then finally, I was able to move into New York City. Um, and some years later, I went briefly to Binghamton, where I, I received my doctorate degree. And you, you dealt with the w harsh winters yeah, of that horrible. area. Yes. <laughs> you, you didn't want to stay. Well, if no, you were, your heart was not. already in New, in, in New York, <laughs> no. in Manhattan. So uh, No, I worked very, it was full. Thank goodness I got a full fellowship. So I was able to only concentrate on the studies. And uh, I worked very vigorously. And in two years, I came back already. You know, I had simultaneously done the uh, um, courses and the uh, dissertation. So by okay. the time you know I finished my courses, my dissertation was winding down, and I was able to to get out of. You know, of when you of were at NYU, <laughs> uh, or on your undergraduate, you you do have uh, you did major in theater, or was it a playwright? Yeah, it was. Um, it was um, um, liberal arts is actually 
what the program was, but it was a great program because it uh, enabled me to put together my own curriculum, per se. There were a couple of courses I had to take, humanities courses that were um, required, but then I was able to put together the rest of the curriculum and I concentrated in cinema studies. Okay. And script writing. So. Okay, in uh, at Rutgers or at NYU. NYU. That at was NYU. at NYU. At Rutgers, I did uh, visual art, actually. Visual art. Art oh. history and visual art. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if you wanted to say you were, you're also an art historian, you could, or uh, an artist uh, practicing, or I was because I, I slowed that and stopped that so that I could funnel all my energy into my writing. Okay. Uh, but I was doing visual work. Can you? you for a did while. you have a, like a little uh, time? What did you do at Yale? You had something to do with Yale University, or yes, I was accepted into Yale actually for dramaturgy. I was accepted into Yale, and um, I attempted to go. I went. I moved, and because I dream, dream was to get an Ivy League, um, right. you know, degree, because not because it's. Uh, you know, me la puedo echar or whatever, but, but why because, not? Well, you yeah, but because an Ivy League difficile. degree would lead to, you know, a better situation for me to have more power in this society, you know? So, um, but unfortunately, I got in and um, they, you know, I wasn't able to secure any funds. I looked everywhere, um. high and low at that time. This was like 1989. And um, could the only, the last resort I had was to ask my parents to mortgage their home in Puerto Rico, and I refused to do that, so I left, you know. But then you, you found an opportunity at NYU. What, no, th then, no, because I graduated from NYU first, and then I was accepted into Yale. Oh, okay, for your doctorate degree. Yes, for, for graduate studies, for, for yes. Graduate studies. And then... Um, you know, that didn't happen, so then I, it took me a few years, and then I got into the doctorate program at Binghamton in the English department. Uh, State mm -hmm. University of New York at SUNY. Yes, State University of New York, for which I'm very grateful, and, you know, it was a great department to be in. I learned a lot, um, and it was great. It's just that it's hard to deal with Binghamton. It's so cold. Yeah, that's it's right always here. snowing or raining, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see the sun once in a blue moon, oh you know, so. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, but Binghamton itself is a beautiful place. I mean, Rod Sterling was, Rod Sterling was from Binghamton, you know. Uh, well, it must be a beautiful, it's a beautiful place in the springtime. Oh, yes. The fall, uh, it's just the winters are harsh. Yeah. yeah, the winters are hard, yeah. Even the snow, it looks gorgeous, you know, it's uh -huh. just beautiful. I have so many photographs. But the, but, but and they know hard. how to clean it quickly for whatever reason <laughs> that downstate hasn't managed to, mm -hmm. to develop that talent. <laughs> yes. You know, they're experts over yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> immediately, right? Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> what, you, you were Binghamton and then you returned downstate and um, what mm -hmm. happened then? And you were, you, mm -hmm. you're an accomplished writer, all of your, how many publications? Have? Well, um, I have a book of poetry. I have uh, an anthology that I had put together um, of, of young adult writers, uh, you know, poetry. Um, and I have, uh, I did a, a, a cute uh, coloring book for um, Casa Maria, I think they're called. Casita uh, Maria. Casita Maria, yes. Which was given to the children in the community, was given for free. So I. And that was honoring. That. Let's let's talk about that. That yes. was honoring the the three three sisters. One which is still who is still alive. Yes, the, the Madri, our Madrina de las Artes, Elba Cabrera, right? And yes, the other, And then the other two were her sisters. Her, her sisters? sisters. One was a, a one of the fir well first Puerto Rican, I think, librarian who was incredible, and. Um, and then uh, another one was involved with the organizations, uh, you know. Um, well, in the Bronx, so they fought yes. for, for uh, she education. She established, I think, uh, yeah. an organization in the Bronx. I'm terrible with, you know, remembering titles and things but um, and names. But um, they're going to have a big celebration, I think, for them in September. There's yes. a committee working on that. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, so, but 
uh, it was an honor to do that. It was a real honor for me to do that and work. And you've and traveled that. around the world. What, uh, I've traveled a little bit, not as much as I like, but <laughs> I've traveled a little bit. Yes. So I've where been, have you gone with uh, had, as a poet? Yeah. Well, I was asked to uh, I was asked to go to uh, Europe, to Paris, to France, to present my work at the University of Nantes in. Um, and in France, and I did that, and um, also presented in Paris at that point. So um, you would read in English, and then someone yes. would translate, or, or some, your work has been translated into yes. different languages as yeah, well. Yeah, they, they uh, saw a piece that uh, was uh, published in an anthology, and it was in English and French, and they recruited You published me. it in French, or who tra somebody they, trans they, they, they translated. translated it, yeah, and they published it in uh, French and English and they saw the piece and so they liked it so they recruited me and they paid for me to go and it was a, an incredible, it was one of the best trips I ever had in my life. It was beautiful, 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 yeah. And then I read, uh, I read in different parts of Germany. I went with, um, at one point with Billy Bang and his quintet and uh, may he rest in peace and you know he was Fabulous. I mean, incredible jazz violinist. I mean, genius. And uh, I had the really wonderful opportunity to do that with him, and that was amazing too. So, there's um, a, a piece you're going to be reading. Yes. Why don't we? Why don't we? And it, and it was written specifically for Puerto Rico. Why don't yes. we read it and then we continue talking? Yes. This piece was written um, for. Uh, I went to af a year after the uh, Hurricane Maria struck. And um, this was my, um, my what, what I saw, let's say my experience when I went to Puerto Rico and uh, you know, everything that I saw. And what was going on here in the United States and you know, at that point we were under Trump's, uh, I don't know what you would call Surveillance. it. Surveillance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and his people, whatever they are. <laughs> So then, uh, you know, I, I just, all of that came together and I wrote this piece. It's called, I Come to See for Myself on the Anniversary of Hurricane Maria. I fly in to see for myself below blue tarps over the homes of my nation, like those silver blankets that cover the souls of Mayan and Arawak children locked inside cages on the U.S. mainland I left behind. Arriving home, I enter a mass of confusion. Plantain crops walloped in their places of birth. Five foot tall grass rebelliously advancing to heaven. My mother's lemon tree on her last leg, hunched over, barely breathing. I witness it for myself. Splintered wooden electrical poles held up by a neighbor's twine. Trees arrowed through one another now growing sideways, surviving. Not the palm trees though, the palm trees chose victory or death, no in between half-hearted living, some growing new hair, others simply guillotines by Maria's detonation. I walk into the new growth of forests, detect the low lamenting sounds of the injured there, witness the anger etched into the undulating mountains surrounding me in the distance. I see the U.S. cavalry arrived just in time. Cortez and Columbus repackaged into a 21st century nightmare. Armies in metallic flying machines using talking devices, exchanging messages in a foreign language through invisible airwaves. I see the cavalry arrived to help themselves to the casinos they built, to hurl paper towels at the local mortician, to seize their opportunity to maximize on the extinction of the natives, keeping them in drawn out darkness with no power to run hospitals, no shelter with no water. I cross the land from west to east, south to north, to see the revelers and the ruins for myself, to lend an ear to survivors and to the dead. See shuttered schools for miles along the route. I run out of fingers on which to count them all. 
part of a plan to ruin us, a small voice reminds me. I walk along the turquoise shore, lined of amputated homes, crumbled fences, collapsed doorways into the sea. Inside, bits and pieces of families remain, their vestiges now across the Atlantic at the opposite end. Back in Ponce, I sit in my mother's rocking chair, watch my neighbor's hummingbirds who've arrived to visit her ruby coral bells. I think of my father's strength in his humility. He walked in silence, built a house to withstand a cyclonic catastrophe. I see for myself the natives are the majesty of this world. Together, they've cleared the paths, sawing, hewing through mammoth barriers of deceit and loathing, retrieved their own water, traversing the inundation of Washington's elite that vowed to drown them. They went about their lives by the light of a candle or an old wooden light pole they stitched back together with all the love on earth, maneuvering through a world of cadavers inside Maria's eye amid the tantrums of the privileged, a nation held its ground, now raises its foundation of ancestor eminence anew. Bravo, bravo. Very moving. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That must have been an experience. It's a, we think about pre 9-11, post 9-11, and mm -hmm. some of us who have a relationship with Puerto Rico yeah. think of pre-Maria, post-Maria. Absolutely. When you, you visit every year, you go every year I, to your yeah. second home. You have I a try, home there. Yes, I have a home there. Yes. Um, recently, uh, have you gone back since COVID or you, you have plans to uh, return? Yeah, I, I, went, uh, I went last August. I was there. How, and, did, uh, how did it feel? Well, actually, I, it, was, it was hard because um, also on, in addition to the COVID, the pollution of the island is um, now coming, you know, to a point where I've, I, it, it sort of clashed with me directly um, because I tried to go to a couple of beaches I usually go to and I wasn't allowed in because the water was not uh, up to par and people Which beaches were, were those? These were in... Uh, in, in the um, south or? These were in the south, sorry, in the southwest. Uh, yeah, sort of southwest at the... Uh, Guanica. Okay. In Guanica, I went and uh, there was a, a beach that I loved there, Caña Gorda. A lot of people know that beach. It's a gorgeous beach, and um, I wasn't allowed to go in. They well, they advised me if I went in, I was wouldn't be able to go into the water because it could be dangerous. In, in so because of, of the, the the they tested the water and it wasn't it was contaminated or something, and you know that's uh, it's a real it it was a terrible feeling uh, for me. I mean, it was a really, like a feeling of loss, of real loss, almost like a feeling of loss of innocence in a way, because this is a place that's pristine, you know? And Puerto Rico, you know, a lot of, it's just beautiful and they're destroying it incredibly so. I mean, dumping, you know, um, coal ash in Peñuelas and those, I mean, horrible, horrible what they're doing, you know, what the, what the powers in charge are doing, you know, to the island, it's terrible, you know, and I think um, now with, with uh, you know, trying to sell off the island to the, you know, to the elite and to the rich and try pushing the people out, um, you know, it's also a horrible thing because, you know, they, uh, there's no respect at all for the people. There's no respect for the culture. There's no, you know. Um, of, the, of, the, of the new buyers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no, yeah. Very well, that, well, that's happening mm -hmm. in, in one of the jewels of Puerto Rico, the small island of Culebra. That's horrible. Where 
Mm -hmm. um, it's just being bought out. There is no affordable housing for natives and families uh, or individuals who want to go work in Culebra. They have mm -hmm. to they have to ferry in every day from yeah. uh, from the mainland because there's nowhere to live. There's mm -hmm. no housing because everything is being uh, purchased and then it's being turned into uh, Airbnb. Yeah. So you, no one can afford to live there. I mean, who mm -hmm. can afford to pay Airbnb? Uh, there, there is no long-term rentals. Yeah. You know, and and that's a problem that's happening in the Vieques. You yeah. know, but Culebra is more striking because it's such a small island. You yes. know. So uh, it's like the people of Culebra, los culebrenses, are being displaced. Yeah, you know, they, they, if you're a little kid and you live with your parents, fine, but then you grow up and you want to go, you go away to study maybe and then come, you can't come back. You can't, yeah. you know, unless you come back with, you know, Money. a sack full of millions Money. of dollars. And, yeah. and, that, and that's what's happening in Puerto Rico. What do you think about the situation? Uh, the, it's my understanding there's, they plan to have another plebiscite. Um, Will, will you ever see independence, you think, in this lifetime? No, honestly, no, I don't. Unfortunately, you know, um, if, if a superpower like the United States wants to remain, uh, wants to keep Puerto Rico, that's what's going to happen. I mean, it just... So you'd see the possibility of it becoming a state then? More than well, independence? Well, I don't or? know. I, that I'm not sure if it's going to be one or the other because it's a game, you know. Um, it's like a ping pong game and, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, the people throughout the, the, the centuries, you know, they've been slowly a part of the people, not all the people mean, I don't include myself there and there's certainly not you. And there's a lot of, there's a big group of people fighting for the independence of the island, but you know, the people who are in power, who are placed in power, they've been brainwashed to think you know, that the circumstances in which we're in are the best circumstances or statehood would be the best circumstance, you know. And of course, you know, uh, you know, these are people who, you know, get money, you know, have the best homes, have the, so to them, they're, it's great. They're going to be fine you know? either way. Huh? They will be fine either right. way. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, some. so. So, uh, Right now, uh, you as a college professor, Borico College, mm -hmm. um, do you find that there is uh, a hunger for Puerto Rican, anything literature <laughs> to learn about history uh, by your students? They, they, yeah, the students are always curious, you know, to know uh, things that go on. And I, I try to, to, what we call, what we say is facilitate. You know, I try to facilitate their learning of things that they don't hear about. Most things they don't hear about in the media, you know. Right. I mean, because the media is controlled and they're not going to tell them, you know. I mean, I tell them, you wouldn't even believe what's going on in terms of the climate crisis because they're not going to tell you that in the media. You, you have to look for that. You and have you have search. a message. Climate yes. change kills. Absolutely. And then that when Absolutely. you have a majority of people, there's a there's a a, a, a vocal not majority, but there's a vocal group mm -hmm. saying on one side saying that's there is that's non-existent, you know. And then others who have who 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 are gifted with with eyesight, yes, can see yes it is. Yes. Well, you have a group of people that only care about money. I mean, these people are people that have, I don't have children, and these people have children and grandchildren, they don't care about their futures. They don't even care about their own families, really. You know, they only care about the money they make, the satisfaction they get immediately, right now. The, the fossil fuel industry, I mean, they're, you know, I'm sorry, they're horrible. I, that's my opinion, they're horrendous. Until they turn around and, you know, we have the, the, uh, the capacity to, to to go to clean energy, completely to clean energy, we could do that, but they won't do it. No. Because there's a certain group, a small group of, of hoarders, you know, uh, money hoarders are making all this money and they don't care about everybody, anybody right. else, you know, unfortunately. 
Now, that's my opinion. That's how I see it, you know, so. Now, if um, our viewers wanted to get to know more about Nancy Metcado, mm -hmm. what is your website? Or how uh, can they I have a website. It's nancy dash or hyphen mercado dot com. Nancy yes. dash mercado dot com. Not underscore. Yeah. Nancy yeah. dash yes. mercado dot com. And mm -hmm. uh, you could uh, see all of the events where you'll be reading in the future, yeah. all of the, your, mm -hmm. your anthology, a list yep. of everything uh, uh, that Nancy has done. And any, th any future coming up uh, over the summer? The every, everything will be listed in the, on your yes. website, your yes. events. Yes, uh, I have, yes. And I also wanted to briefly mention that I did edit an anthology that's online, uh, that's a, a first anthology of New Yorican women poets. And okay. that uh, was uh, virtually published by uh, Hunter College. Okay, uh, and, and, um, and we could mm -hmm. see that going to what website? Uh, El Centro. At El Centro. El Centro's website, if you look it up or if you look up my name and, and then, and then it'll, it'll come El Centro, it should, you should yes. be. Of course, my webpage has a direct link to that. Okay, so nancy-mercado.com. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for coming to the Art Settlers of New York. Thank you for having uh, me. We expect it. to have you again. <laughs> Thank um, you. After the school starts mm -hmm. again, hopefully, will your, your your teaching schedule won't be as tight, yeah. and you'll be mm -hmm. able to return something else that we can speak about mm -hmm. and listen to your the words of Nancy Medgado, you know, performed okay. by you. Thank you, know, you which so is, much. Which is a real treat. Thank <laughs> you. Thank, thank you thank again you. for coming. Mm -hmm. Y que viva Puerto Rico como sí, sea. Y la gente. Rico, and we yes. know our people. Yeah. Our, we, We're very strong. We are. Mm -hmm. the, especially the New Yorican mm -hmm. uh, oh, yes. community. We'll fight. And finally, <laughs> uh, the diaspora mm -hmm. is not a diaspora. It's all part of one. Yes. Yes, todos, we're all todos one people. Puerto Rican, doesn't Island and, and here, we're all one people, and that's what we have to maintain at right. the forefront so we can work together. Thank you. Thank you.